is up and welcome back to yet another React Premium. Today we're checking out another SCP. This is SCP-123 Miniature Black Hole. And if the title says exactly what it's supposed to be, it just seems like a micro, a smaller black hole, like an orb-like shape, probably floating around somewhere. That's just, I'm just guessing. <laughs> um, and by the thumbnail, it kind of looks like Dr. Bright is in this, at least based on the thumbnail. It looks like him. I could be completely wrong, because it's been a while since I've seen Dr. Bright in an SCP Explained in story uh, video, because I haven't watched them in quite a while. If you're not new to this channel, I haven't watched any SCPs in quite some time. If I have, they just repeat some ones I've already watched and saved the new ones for my return to reacting to the franchise. But... Other than that, it's just been quite a long time, so I don't remember what the thumbnails for Dr. Bright from this channel look like. So, other than that, we're going to ahead and get right into this bad boy, because this got me intrigued in three, two, one, shebang. What is the most dangerous thing you can imagine? An average person might say an apex predator or a violent killer. Meanwhile, a researcher working for the SCP Foundation might... Alright, you want my personal take on that? How about an interdimensional dimension that is divided to kind of looking like hell and wants to invade your reality? It's weird that I came up with that on the spot, but that's what I would think would be the most dangerous thing to come across. Might cite one of the XK class end of the world scenarios, like the release of the Devourer of Worlds as the most dangerous thing ah, the they doorway. can imagine. But if you were to pose that question to an astrophysicist, ask what they think is the most dangerous thing they can imagine, then you're likely to get only one answer. A black hole. That area of space that pulls in anything and everything around it with its immense gravity, whether it's planets or asteroids or even light itself. Nothing can escape the pull of a black hole. Around every black hole is an area known as the Event Horizon, and once you go past this boundary, there is no going back. If you were aboard a spacecraft that ended up going past the event horizon of a black hole, you're essentially as doomed as anyone can possibly be. According to certain laws of quantum mechanics, black holes do have their own temperature, and will often really? emit what is known as Hawking radiation, named after the renowned physicist Stephen Hawking. I actually Given that black know that. holes absorb everything, I went to science class, and they never brought that up once about black holes. So I'm actually quite surprised about that. They will also pull this radiation back into their own mass, shrinking as they gradually collapse in on themselves. As for what's inside a black hole, hard to say. Anything can be pulled into one, but nothing can exist within it. Or at least that's what the world's leading scientists will tell you. Other theories have been floating around there on where black holes might lead. Perhaps they might be doorways into other universes and dimensions beyond our understanding. Or maybe black holes are gaps in the fabric of the space-time continuum, and falling through one might send you hurtling years into the future or even the past. And then, there's SCP-123. Something there we about go. the Foundation keeps well guarded. SCP-123 consists of a gray geodesic sphere, meaning it is a shape comprised of various connected triangles. Oh wow, it is tiny. Kind of like the Epcot Center. Wait, built from an unknown material. The miniature never sphere mind. housing <laughs> SCP-123 consists of 60 triangles, with empty spaces between that allow someone to view the center. Within it is what looks like a much smaller sphere, only around a single millimeter in diameter. This inner sphere is completely black all over, emitting zero light, and tests by Foundation researchers have revealed that this dark sphere will also not reflect light either. That's because SCP-123 is, as you may have guessed, a contained miniature black hole. Much like the How larger do you contain black a holes small black hole? the solar system, the core of SCP-123 has a strong gravitational force capable of gently pulling any objects that are within three meters of the outer geodesic sphere towards it. Any object resting against the surface of the outer sphere seems to become double its normal weight as it gets caught up in the powerful forces within. However, while the pull of the black hole is at least weakened somewhat by this outer layer, inside the casing the strength of the black hole is dramatically increased. 
You would be smart to leave your keys, wallet, and phone in another room if you were approaching SCP-123, as any small object that can fit through the triangular gaps in the outer shell will be pulled into the black hole in the center. When brought hey, close AirPods. enough, <laughs> solid objects will rapidly accelerate as they are snatched up by the force of the anomalous sphere, only for the object to vanish entirely from view as it's lost to the void within. According to tests conducted by Foundation research teams, the same occurs if liquid is ever poured through one of the outer sphere's gaps, and it will be sucked away into the black hole like water down a drain. Further observations huh. made by the Foundation's researchers confirm that all light near SCP-123 curves towards the black sphere in the center. Interestingly, black holes cannot normally be seen or observed directly with the naked eye, due to them being able to pull in light. So instead, astronomers and astrophysicists will monitor changes in the area surrounding a suspected black hole for any notable changes. The miniature black hole of SCP-123 shares these light-bending properties, but also appears to be at least partially observable while contained within the outer geodesic shell. While the Foundation is still unsure as to what the outer sphere is made of, it seems to act as some sort of cage keeping the black hole stable and secure. Otherwise, the cage itself, along with the entire planet outside it, would presumably yeah. be sucked into the center. In fact, research staff- I just got ten Johnny Test vibes just from that. <laughs> if you know what episode I'm referring to, then you know what I'm talking about. The, the one with the little spot that, that um, his sister has made. I forgot the name of it, them. It's been too long since I've seen that cartoon. But they made this little spot, and uh, Johnny and his pet and his friend Dog—I forgot his name—accidentally uh, split in half, and one half is trying to destroy the ends up becoming like a black hole, while the other half is still acts like a teleporter. But if you have a, if you know that episode, then you know what I'm talking about, and you're just as old as I am, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that show is not airing anymore. Have even been able to roughly calculate the mass of the interior R2 black cartoons. sphere and have determined the that the cage surrounding it somehow reduces the gravitational effects of the black hole. SCP Foundation experts state that the black hole within SCP-123 currently has a mass of approximately 10 to the 29th power kilograms within the outer shell, but the cage's dampening effects may mean that the inner sphere's actual mass could be even higher. Under ordinary circumstances, a black hole with a 10 to the 29th power kilograms of mass would have a Schwarzschild radius of about 200 meters. Any professional astrophysicists in our audience will already be well aware that a Schwarzschild radius is the size of the black hole's event horizon. If you remember earlier, we mentioned that an event horizon is the area that surrounds a black hole. And going past this boundary means that you now have a one-way ticket into the black hole whether you like it or not. The fact that SCP-123 doesn't have such a large event horizon, and that only objects placed within the outer sphere are pulled in, shows that the only thing stopping the black hole absorbing everything around it, including all of us, is the cage it's currently held in. Nothing can escape the pull of a black hole. No solid matter, no liquids, nope, not nothing. even light. However, in the case of SCP-123, it seems that there is at least one state of matter that this black hole is unable to absorb. Gases. Even though gaseous gases. matter is affected by the gravitational force of SCP-123, for some unknown reason gas cannot breach the gaps in the outer shell surrounding the black hole. The SCP Foundation okay. is still studying why only solids and liquids may pass through the cage while gas cannot, but it's almost certainly for the best. After all, well, here's my assumption. It's gas you can't physically grab onto, and I guess the magnetic pole needs to physically grab onto it. So if it's a gas, there's nothing really to grab. We just kind of move it out of the way. That's my guess on that. If SCP-123 could absorb gas and pull other elements into its mass, there would be little to stop it from sucking up all the oxygen surrounding it. Somehow, either by an intentional design or by the natural properties of the material it's crafted from, the cage around the inner sphere seems to protect the outside world from the miniature black hole. It prevents the entire planet's air as well as the rest of the planet itself from being pulled in and crushed, while also keeping the black hole at a far more manageable size. The two components of SCP-123 seem to behave in a symbiotic manner, acting together as one. When someone moves the outer cage, the black hole will follow and stay in a fixed position, 
hovering inside the center of the geodesic case. Created the cage, Just though. what exactly makes both of SCP-123's parts behave in such a way has left even the Foundation's top researchers baffled. While a miniaturized black hole could potentially cause devastating damage, for now at least, SCP-123 doesn't pose much of a threat as long as it remains contained by the SCP Foundation. Within the confines of the geodesic cage, the black hole itself is nearly harmless, only pulling in small objects. As a result, the Foundation has been able to securely keep SCP-123 inside one of their facilities. The contained miniature black hole is fastened to a sturdy table with the use of straps and chains. However, personnel are forbidden from affixing any hooks to the gaps in the outer casing. Otherwise, these run the risk of being dragged into the black hole's gravitational pull potentially along with whatever the hooks were attached to. The Foundation's researchers monitor the black hole 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year. Devices for measuring the gravitational force of SCP-123 are placed within the same room the black hole is kept, but at a safe distance of 100 meters away. Staff are also instructed to never place objects within the outer shell of SCP-123 and are prohibited from inserting any objects through the gaps in the geodesic sphere unless an experiment is taking place. At all times, SCP-123 is to be treated with the utmost care, as if it was a fragile object. Right. And for all the Foundation knows of the unidentified outer sphere, it could well be. If the cage containing the black hole was ever breached, anything within 200 meters would be pulled into the center of SCP-123. As all forms of nearby matter were absorbed, the black hole would begin to increase in size, pulling anything and everything into itself as it continued to grow. Before long, the entirety of planet Earth would be collapsing in on itself, all poured towards one single point until the planet fractured. Perhaps the SCP-123 black hole would release and then absorb enough Hawking radiation to seal itself, but by that point, the world as we know it would, would be gone. gone. A true XK-class end-of-the-world scenario, with pretty much nothing the Foundation can do to stop it once it's already started. Even SCP-2000 would be worthless once it was yeah. sucked inside the miniature black hole. So when we say that SCP-123 needs to be handled with extreme care, we truly mean it. The fate of the world depends on it, meaning no one member of the Foundation should ever shake the sphere around or exert any kind of force onto it. During any transfers, SCP-123 is not to be transported over large bodies of water in case it begins to pull the liquid into its center. Researchers working near and studying the miniature black hole even have to adhere to a strict dress code to avoid their clothes getting absorbed into the spatial anomaly. Any member of Foundation staff interacting with SCP-123 is instructed that they must wear tight-fitting clothing, so no straps or laces, no chains or other dangling jewelry, and long hair has to be tied back. Sounds a lot like a school uniform dress code, right? It might not yeah, be all that fashion, but it's a small price to pay to avoid getting painfully pulled through the small triangular gaps in the outer shell into the black hole within. The only question left is, what do you do with a tiny, perpetually stable black hole? When left alone, SCP-123 doesn't really seem to have much of a purpose, but it's certainly good at getting rid of things so well that you'd never, ever see them again. The contained miniature black hole's gravitational force has led to some higher-ranking individuals in the SCP Foundation discussing SCP-123's potentially usefulness as a disposal unit. After of course all, they did. Nothing you'd throw into it would ever come back. However, the head researcher studying this phenomena is concerned about the structural integrity of the geodesic cage that the black hole is kept in. Anyone looking to dispose of something using SCP-123 must first get this doctor's approval to do so, or request a formal hearing with a Foundation higher-up. Otherwise, any interactions with the miniature black hole are restricted, with experiments still ongoing to determine how strong that outer cage is, and just how long it's going to hold for. Because if it ever breaks, trust us, you'll know. Now go check yeah. out SCP-3001 Red Reality and SCP-2317 The Devourer of Worlds A Door to Another World for more truly cosmic SCPs. That went pretty much where I had expected it to go with this one.
But as I said at the beginning of the video, I thought Dr. Bright was in the thumbnail, ended up not being him. He was not mentioned at all once in this video, so it was just another doctor. But it also leads to the question of how did the SCP Foundation discover it, and where did the black hole come from? Because they did not explain it here. And I don't know why it would even be on Earth. Like, why would it even be here? Why? <laughs> but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's STP reaction video. I guess I grab all this stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.